Hello again, this is Jeremy, and today I'm going to talk about how to find the area between curves using definite integrals. One of the big things that I'm going to expect you to do here, and I think that anybody who's trying to do this will need to do, is use your graphing calculator a lot. You need to see the pictures. You need to see what these functions look like. So I'm starting out with um, an example where we're using the area uh, between a curve and really the x-axis, which is y equals zero. So anytime you see find the area between and one of the equations is y equals zero, that's actually talking about the x-axis. So what I did here was I went ahead and graphed. And here's the example of what I put in my calculator. So you can see I just graphed one of the functions because y equals zero is the x-axis. And then I went ahead and I adjusted my window from minus one to three for x since that's the interval we're looking at. And I just left uh, y min and max minus 10 to 10. And so I got a really nice picture that you can see over here of my curve. Now here's the actual curve that we're talking about, the x squared minus 4x, so that's this one right here. And then when we say y equals 0, that's this curve right here. So that's the x-axis. So we're trying to actually find this area here. Now the thing is, this area switches positions. Do you see at one point from here to here, the x squared minus 4x is above the x-axis and from there on it's below. Now our general formula is to take uh, the difference between the curve on top and the curve on bottom. But here, since it switches out, anytime it switches, you need two integrals. So that's the first thing I'm noting is I'm going to need two integrals. The next thing I'm noting is, okay, what will those two integrals be? So again, for this first region right here, the x squared minus 4x is on top. And so that region goes from minus 1, because that's where we started, right? Because that was our x min, from minus 1 up to 0. So remember, this is the lower value and the upper value. And so since the x squared minus 4x is on top, I do x squared minus 4x, and then I subtract the curve on bottom, which is the 0. Now, this is a little overkill, actually, writing out minus 0, but that will be the pattern even when it's something more complicated than 0. So again, the curve on top minus the curve on bottom. And now to find the complete area, I need to look over in this region over here. Okay, in this region over here, the y uh, equals zero, where the x-axis is above the function. So that means that when I go to write the integral, so this is plus, from, that starts at zero, and then we go out to our last number, which is three. So from zero to three, I need to put the zero first to represent the x-axis, and then subtract the curve on bottom, which is the x squared minus 4x, and then dx. As you can see, if you get the setup wrong, everything else is going to mess up, right? Because that's the most important part, the setup. Because after that, usually the integrals are pretty nice. You just got to plug in numbers and do a little bit of calculation. So I'm going to simplify this down a little bit. Of course, we put the zeros in there. So this is actually the integral from minus 1 to 0 of x squared minus 4x dx plus the integral of 0 to 3 of minus x squared minus 4x dx. Okay, so now I'm going to start doing the integral. And so the idea with definite integrals is you do the integral as usual, and then you evaluate. So you got to evaluate from minus 1 to 0, and then in the other one from 0 to 3. So for the very first integral, I'd have x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2. And this is evaluated from minus 1 to 0. All right, so we'll plug in the 0 first, and then the minus 1. And then this is plus. Okay, now I'm going to put this minus here for now, but I'll fix this in a little bit. Minus, so that's a little crazy, right? x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2. So I'm doing that second integral. And this is all evaluated from 0 to 3. Okay, and then I always like to do one more step of simplifying. I'm assuming you're probably going to put this in your calculator. But I'm going to write out a little more than you might normally so you can really see what you would put in your calculator. For example, over here, the 4 and the 2, those can cancel out and leave a 2, right? Same idea here. And then, of course, this plus minus thing I did is kind of goofy. So I want to write this out a little bit nicer. You know, I've noticed that one of the things about getting the correct answer with these is being highly organized. In other words, you're going to probably use your calculator at some stage to make sure that you don't make an arithmetic mistake. But even a mistake typing into your calculator can mess things up. So this will be this area minus, and then we have x cubed over 3 again, and then minus 2x squared. 
Again, that one is evaluated from 0 to 3. Okay, so I want to show you in this example how the numbers plug in. So the 0 will go in first. Of course, that's going to be 0, but it's important to see what happens here. Because, okay, 0 cubed over 3 minus 2 times 0, that's going to be 0. So when I plug in the 0, I'll get 0. But then it's minus what you get when you plug in the minus 1. So that's why I wanted to put that there. The signs are so important. And so when I plug in minus 1, I'll have minus 1 cubed over 3 minus 2 times minus 1 squared. And then this is minus, so now I'm here to this piece right here. And I say, okay, I'm going to plug in the 3 first. So that's 3 cubed over 3 minus 2 times 3 squared. Now here when I plug in the 0, it's just going to be minus a 0, and that won't change signs or anything. And so when you actually calculate this out, what you should end up with, with as an exact answer is 34 over 3. Now, a lot of the online homework systems, they don't expect an exact answer, but some of your professors, such as myself, might. And so an exact answer is 34 over 3, but of course you can divide this to get an approximation in your calculator. So again, notice the importance of the setup and then careful, careful uh, calculations from there on out. In fact, I typically right here would have canceled out a 3 and left this as 3 squared before I even typed it in the calculator. But however you decide to do it, make sure you're keeping track of little things like signs. Now this isn't the only type of uh, situation you can come across. Of course there's many, but I wanted to talk about one that's a little different than the textbook has. So I'm going to clear this out. And I get to another example and it says, find the area bounded by the graphs, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x, and y equals x. So of course the first thing I do is graph this. We're not given a bound on the x's, so what I did was I used my standard window. So I just did zoom standard, and so I got the following curve. So when it says find the area bounded between, what it's actually asking us to find is this area right in here, the two regions that are completely enclosed by the graph. And actually, we can zoom in a little bit more. I thought that this was hard to see, but I wasn't sure where to zoom into it. You know, I was like, this looks like maybe zero, maybe a one, two, three, four, or five, maybe. And so one of the first things we're going to have to do anyway is figure out the intersection points, and that can also help us with the graph. So I wanted to do that first. So anytime you're not given a range of values, you're going to have to figure out the intersection points. The intersection points are going to be wherever the graphs equal, or where, excuse me, wherever the equations equal. So that would be the solutions to this equation. We didn't have to do this before because we were given a range of values already. Okay, so when I simplify this, I'm going to bring the x over. I get x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x equals 0, which looks really awful, but everything's got an x, so that means I can pull an x out. And so I got x times x squared minus 6x plus 8. Oh, now I like this because this is a common type of thing to factor. Quadratic, so I have x times x minus 4 x minus 2 equals 0. And so I get the following. I get x equals 0, x equals 4, and x equals 2. So these are my intersection points. So we got to jot those down somewhere, remember them, because this is going to help us set up the integral. This is where the order is probably changing. And so I'm going to have to look at these points a little closer. And so what I did was actually I zoomed in on the graph. And I changed my window to go from 0 to 4. The to uh, the two biggest, and then I also went ahead, or the smallest and then the biggest, and then I also went ahead and brought this in a little bit. And so when I did that, I had the following graph, and this is a lot easier to see. Now the reason I chose this example, because you have several of these in your textbook that you should definitely look over and practice with. In other words, you should redo them, see if you get the same answers. But I chose this example specifically because there's a special thing going on here. So we want to find this area and this area. If you look here, th these areas look the same, right? These regions look the same. And um, this isn't going to happen all the time, but there's actually symmetry going on here. These do have the same area. So we'll be able to use a shortcut, which will happen sometimes. Again, not always. But let's say we were setting up without the shortcut first. So remember, my points of intersection, we already figured out x equals 0. This is the point x equals 2. And this is the point x equals 4. Well, that's the y value when x equals 4 the y value when x equals 2, etc. Okay, so if I was to look at these, then I see, okay, we got one graph on top, and then it switches order, and so I'm going to need two integrals, one for this region, one for this region. 
All right, so the first integral is going to go from 0 to 2. And what graph's on top? It's the one with the curve, right? We know that y equals x is a straight line. So this curve must be this function here. So I know, okay, that must be x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x. If you use the trace button on your calculator or even just the arrows, it will tell you which curve it is by just highlighting it. And so it's the first curve minus the second, so it'll be minus x. Okay, now, second integral for the other piece goes from 2 to 4. Now this time the straight line's on top, so that's going to be the x. So it's x minus x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x. All right, so if I just asked you to set it up, this would be it. This is the setup. Of course, we can simplify a little bit, right? So when I simplify, it'd be 0 to 2. Just subtract an x, I get x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x dx. And then same thing kind of over here, integral from 2 to 4, x minus all this stuff, so it's going to be a minus x cubed, a plus 6x squared, and then a minus 9x plus an x, a minus 8x. So this would be the setup, the simplified setup now. So I have this all ready to go. And now the question is, what do I do with it? Well, I told you that there was something special with this. So I could calculate this just like I did in the previous problem. I totally trust that you could do that. So I'm going to show you the shortcut that sometimes will work. And it works in this case because of the symmetry. Since these regions are the same, they have the same area. We can just calculate in a couple of different ways. This one, to me, is much easier because one of the numbers we plug in is a zero. There's not as many negatives floating around. And so if I was to use that, which is to calculate the area of this first region, if I was to use that to calculate this, then two times it should give me the area of this plus this, which is essentially what I want to find. So I can shorten all of this up and say this is equal to two times the integral from zero to two of x cubed minus 6x squared plus, eight, plus 8x. And now I've simplified my calculations tremendously. So again, you can still go brute force with this one, and that will always work. The only thing you, is before, you just have to be careful with the individual numbers and make sure you watch your signs. But here, I'm still going to have to be careful and all that, but the calculations are much easier because now I can say, this is two times. Okay, now I got x to the fourth over four minus 6x cubed over three plus 8x squared over two all evaluated from 0 to 2. Now before I go evaluating that, plugging in the calculator, um, which I don't even think you need here, I'm going to simplify x to the 4th over 4. Can't really mess with that, but 6 and 3, that's going to be just a 2. So this is 2x cubed. And then plus 8 and 2, that's just a 4, 4x squared. And evaluated from 0 to 2. So the first number I'd plug in is 2. The second 0. The 0 is going to be 0. And that's just subtracted at the end. So this is 2 times... 2 to the 4th over 4 minus 2 times 2 cubed plus 4 times 2 squared. And then it's minus 0, and so the final result I end up with is 8. So this, the units on these, by the way, this is square units, so it's 8 square units. should have put that on the previous one, but I won't be checking that. But of course, it's an area, so it's square units, whatever this might be. But as you can see, this symmetry can help. So in some situations, you might run across this. So really watch for that, especially, and, and always watch for the multiple integrals. Anytime you end up with multiple points at intersection, you're likely to end up with multiple integrals. And sometimes your graphing calculator on the regular zoom won't show that, and you need to zoom in and see. You say, okay, I got three points at intersection. Why am I not seeing them? And zoom in, don't get fooled by the picture. With that said, I would say the steps are, one, graph. Two, very carefully set up, and before you graph, if you, if you have to, find the points of intersection. Then very carefully set up your integrals, and don't put it in the calculator until you've simplified a little bit. I think those steps will lead to success with these problems.